Good morning to all of you. Welcome back to Namaste Village and to the Namaste Experience. It is so great to be with all of you this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't live here at Namaste Village, it is a beautiful day today, gorgeous. The rain comes and you can fe you feel the freshness that, that it brings, just as these sessions bring a freshness to our hearts, don't they? They, they bring a vitality and an energy into our experience that uh, sets us right there on the, the, the crest of, of a hill. And we're called to simply step off, to, to trust that the instant we take that final step, our wings will appear, our wings will spread, and we will fly. How many of you feel that? That the, the momentum of this joining, of coming together in the morning, sets us up for that, if we would but choose. Scott was singing a song right before we began with just the word now, now, now. Why not? Why not now? That's pretty much what every session that we share here is about. Why not right now? Heaven is within you now. Why not receive that? Why not take that step into the experience of now? So one of the reasons why this call is so powerful within us is because of the current, like the current of a river that draws us to that infinite ocean of grace. We're going to talk about that river this morning, the, the, the call, the, the momentum that we feel that is pulling us into this experience, whether we even know it or not. Usually what happens is we all feel that, but we, we associate it with something else. We associate it with a, a relationship. If I only had that perfect partner then, or if I only had more money then. But the then becomes when. It's never now, right? It's always if I had something that I don't have now. But the truth is everything you need is within you now. That is what's drawing you. That is the actual current of the river. So l last night I was... Uh, looking at the master teacher within, I just opened it up as I sometimes do, and I read the paragraph that was in front of me, and I wanted to share that with you because I think it is a, a beautiful illustration of that call, that draw, that is drawing us into that, that infinite ocean of grace. So let me read the whole thing first, and we'll go back over it again. To realize the state of perfect non-being, simply relax and be present to the presence of I am. Be present to the presence of I am. A river flows without effort toward the ocean just as you flow effortlessly toward the ocean of infinite grace, infinite being rather. If you surrender to the current, you'll realize that though the quality of the river and ocean may differ, they're actually connected and one. So one may be fresh water, the other may be salt water, but they're connected. You'll, you'll also realize that when the river reaches the ocean, the river's current is no longer required. What is the purpose of the river's current? It is to draw you to the ocean. Once you arrive, your being expands to include not only the ocean, but every river that empties into that ocean. It is this emptying that is important. Let the current take you. Then empty yourself of every longing and desire, but to be one with this infinite ocean of grace. Think of nothing but this, then you'll dissolve and know that the river and the ocean are actually one. 
So right before we started this session, I quickly Googled um, what is it that draws the, the river to the ocean? What is it that creates the current? And it's quite simple. Uh, the, the river is higher than the ocean, so it's gravity that is pulling it into the ocean, right? And I was thinking about that. How does that apply to us? And I realized that what we do in our, our you know, it began talking about the perfect state of non-being, being really the goal, to release the identity. That what we do is we entertain a state of being. I am this, I am that, I'm something else. I'm claiming to be something other than all that is, that infinite ocean of grace, right? In other words, I'm setting myself above God. I'm putting myself above all that is. And that is why we have that longing and that feeling of being drawn into that state of reality, into that infinite ocean of grace, because we have placed ourselves above our Creator. Oops, Oops exactly. <laughs> and therein lies every trouble we've ever had, therein lies every challenge that we're ever going to encounter, because we want to do it on our own. We want to try to accomplish what has already been accomplished. I am as God created me. If I remain as God created me, fear has no meaning. Evil is not real. Sickness, pain, and death do not exist. I am as God created me. And when we surrender to that, then we're pulled effortlessly. We don't need to think about anything. We don't need to do anything. We're just drawn like being on a, a raft, just being pulled right into the ocean. So let's look over this paragraph one more time. To realize a state of perfect non-being, simply relax like being on that raft and be present to the presence of I am, your true identity, who you really are, that that which has never been separated, that which is inseparable from the reality of who you are and who you will remain. The desire for that experience, the uncompromising desire for that experience is all that's required. You have to want it wholly, completely, as we talked about yesterday, wholeheartedly, with all of your being, with all of your heart. You have to, to desire to be one with that infinite ocean of grace, sometimes known as God. Okay, so that's, what, that's where we begin. A river flows without effort toward the ocean, just as you flow effortlessly toward the ocean of infinite being. Infinite being, in other words, this is where you receive your true identity, not outside the ocean, not placing yourself above God or above your creator, but within your creator. Within the divine, this is the only place you'll find your true identity, the identity of I am, that presence. If you surrender to the current, you'll realize that though the quality of the river and the ocean are different, they're actually connected in one. I really like that. You know, the, the ocean is a, a, a huge, seemingly infinite body of salt water. The river is usually clear water, right? And they seem different, but they're connected in one. And when the river flows into the ocean, as we're about to hear, it becomes one with every other, not only the ocean itself, but every other river that is flowing into that ocean. And this is how we become, how we enter into the experience of our own oneness by surrendering, by just allowing ourselves to be pulled into that infinite ocean. Okay. You'll also realize that when the river reaches the ocean, the river's current is no longer required. What is the purpose of the river's current? It is to draw you to the ocean. What is the purpose of the longing that you feel? To draw you to God. Only that. 
So once again, to surrender into that, to, to, to seek only one thing right now instead of multiple things. See, this is the, the goal of the egoic mind is simply to distract you from what you really want. To, yeah, it does a very good job of it. Yeah, to make you want this and to think your salvation is over here and if I could only have that. To distract you from that one thing, to surrender, to just relax into the current itself, into your longing. Once you arrive, your being expands to include not only the river, but every river that empties into the ocean. It is this emptying, this emptying that is important. Just let the current take you. And then empty yourself of every other longing and desire except the only one that's important, to be one with that infinite ocean of grace. It is that emptying that's important. Does that make sense? To come with holy, empty hands unto your God. That's why that paragraph begins by saying, simply do this. This is all you need to do. If you just do this one thing, everything else will take care of itself. Just come with holy, empty hands unto God. Don't try and do it on your own, in other words. It is this emptying that's important. Let the current take you, then empty yourself of every longing and desire, but to be one with that infinite ocean of grace. Think of nothing but this. Then you'll dissolve and know that the river and the ocean are one. So a couple of days ago, I received a wonderful gift, a gift from Ravi. Ravi gave me a, a beautiful, very large picture of Ananda Mayama. And I put it up on my wall. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I had never, I had known of Ananda Mayama before. Um, I remember reading about her in autobiography of a yogi when Yogananda visited her in India, but I had never really read anything or explored her life or teaching. And it was when Darla and Alden were here for a couple of months that Darla began reading a, a book about her and um, not only about her life, but, but her writings. And she was so impressed that I decided to check it out. This sounds like something Ananda Mayama would write. That longing, that single focus, that emptying into the infinite ocean of grace is very much in alignment with what she would share. But really, it's in total alignment with what any whole mind would share, what any other master teacher would share. Because it's so simple. Just surrender to the current. You don't need to do anything but that. I've, I've used the analogy before of when I, I used to live on a, uh, a floating house on the Columbia River. And if you've ever seen the Columbia River, which separates Oregon and Washington, it's a big river, very big river. And so I, I had a paddle board, and I would, uh, of course, your, your driveway is the river, so I would just, just get off my little dock. I would, I would paddle against the current. I would go about maybe a half a mile up, and it took great energy. I would really have to paddle hard, standing up on the board. And then when I would get to a place that felt good, I, I would just sit down. And what would happen? The paddle board would turn around and would just flow. I wouldn't need to do anything. Maybe I would take the, the paddle and, like, having it be the rudder, so it would keep straight, but that was it. There was no effort involved. How often do we spend our time paddling up current, upstream, rather than just letting the current take us? This is why salvation is simple. This is why it's not complicated, but we tend to make it complicated. Religion is usually just the attempt to overcomplicate that which needs no complication. Now, there's nothing wrong with religion. I mean, I'm a priest. 
Well, you know, many we, we have a unity church here. There, there are lots of ways that we do. But let it be simple. Just let, let the boat of your life right itself to be pulled naturally without effort into that experience of grace. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn to Victoria and see what she wants to share on that line. Good morning, dear one. Good morning, Brother James. Good morning, everybody. Well, um, maybe simplicity is our message for the week. I'm so grateful. And um, because, you know, not feeling 100%, keeping things simple makes everything much easier to open to. So when you're speaking about that message of going with the current, the first thing that struck me is when the river goes into the ocean, the ocean is salt water and it's buoyant. We float. That's another great example of how when we open to God's love, thy will be done. That's, it's like all of these are ways of saying, finally, thy will be done in however, whatever tradition we use. We surrender, we go with the river, let go flow into the ocean. Thy will be done. And then we really float because thy will is, is the force of what we already are. Thy will takes us, guides us, fulfills us, gives us in form whatever it is we think we need. Thy will be done. It's really simple. And then the other, the simple piece of it, the counterpart, is when it's simply do this, receive, be open, let go. But what is it we're letting go of? We're only letting go of our ideas, first of who we are, and then of what everything else is. That's called judgment. That's it. There's only, there's only one problem, and it's called we try to figure everything out, and then we try to rearrange it in little special packages of what we think we want and how we want it or we solve it that's a big one let's spend a lot of time solving things <laughs> or we handle it let me just handle this <laughs> and all of it is just judgment it's really it's just that little ripple on the ocean thinking it's the ocean instead of no i think i'll just go into the ocean and be one with it and let it take me and let it guide me thy will be done Letting go of the idea that we have to solve it, I just think it's the greatest gift. It's like that. It's like it's like being given the get out of jail free card. It's like, no problem. It's all over. Don't worry. I got it from here. God, God's really in charge. We're really His kid, and that's it. Judge not, lest you be judged. It's the only. It's the. It's as simple as let go. Let God surrender. Thy will be done. Pick any, let the Tao, let the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter the symbols we use. The symbols are many because we are in a culture of many. But the symbols point to one experience. And that one experience is the presence of that, of God, of I am, of that fullness of love. That's what presence is. It's the fullness of love. I will be done. There's nothing more than saying, I get it. You're in charge. I'm so grateful. Take it, take over. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And, and then it's wondrous. It cannot not be wondrous because we don't have an agenda and we don't have expectations. It should look like this or it should look like that. I don't know what it should look like. I don't know. I, my cousin came to visit. I got COVID. We spent the week in bed both playing, having COVID. It was fun. I had a wash of memories come up that I needed to have come up, feelings that needed to come up that in my day-to-day -day life wouldn't come up. And allowing them up, it was like, it was like um, the Holy Spirit's car wash. I went through the car wash and the car wash washed out everything. You know how a car wash is big, it just, shoosh, everything gets washed out. That's what it was like. I didn't have to worry about doing detail work around the windows. No detail work. Whoosh. Like, and then it, and then now I see it was so perfect. Rita, my cousin, is someone that was part of my everyday life. And really, as soon as I saw her, I missed 
it's like that feeling of the everyday, everyday everybody's in my life and the everyday craziness of it all. I, I have often lived in a collection of crazy people, but so, some people would call, you know, lost souls, weirdos, whatever. But through the years, I've had quite a collection of them. And um, seeing Rita, who herself is unique in many ways, <laughs> it just must have brought it all up. And then thank you, God, you gave me an opportunity to let go and get something we call COVID so that I could just relax effortlessly and, and allow a wish of feelings to come, a flood of cleaning, a flood of letting go of happen. Everything is for our benefit, everything, everything. But it feels like we're, it's not for our benefit when we're thinking, judging, solving, judging in the me identity, that's simple. When it's the we or we identity, everything fits. Everything fits. It, it's not a mystery. It, there's nothing to solve. We belong to God. He's in charge. Let everything be what it is. We have no clue what the bigger picture is. And when we do get a little clue, the most we can truly, honestly be is grateful. It's like I'm sitting here. I'm really grateful for this past week. It was really fun to have a buddy to play backgammon, to have to put your head down every two seconds and go right to sleep. When can you do that? It's like, oh, this is fun. It's like, it takes no effort. Just bam. I've never so, I've never met anyone that is as grateful for having COVID. Oh, I am. Are. Absolutely. Because these feelings could have come up slowly and it would have been painfully cleaning every window pane. I'm not good at detail work. I'm an impressionist anyway. Send me to the car wash. Give me something that knocks me out, washes me through, clean and cool through. I'm grateful. So that's what this is. But that's what everything is. The Holy Spirit's plan, God's plan, that current of grace, the Tao, whatever you call it, it's meant to free us. And all it's freeing us from is our sense of ourselves as a me or any judgments we hold. So whatever the judgments are, just look at them like they're oddities. <laughs> like, so what? Let everybody be what they are. Let everything, say la vie, let it be. The bigger picture, we belong to the current, the pictures belong to the current. They'll all get sorted out by grace. When Jesus says, let the weeds and the wheat, let it grow all together, we'll sort it out. Spirit sorts it out. Not our business, not our job. My life's not my business. None of us is it. Our life belongs to love. That's it. Let love have us. Thanks, Brother James. Thank Amen. you, everybody. I love you all. Wow. Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> Thank you. As always. Yep. All right. Now, how do we do this? Hold on one second. How do we remove pin for? Perfect. Okay. Wow. Thank you. You know, I, I realized as Vicki was sharing that um, we are all stipend children. You know what a stipend child is? A, a, a child that gets a stipend from their parents so they don't have to work. I, I have a good friend from, from college who we always tease, oh, you're just a stipend child. You, you know, parents give you money, so you don't have to do it. And unfortunately, it made him lazy. But, but for us, it means that we don't have to work so hard because we already have everything we need. Our divine parent has given us everything. So we are stipend children. We, we already, it's already there. We don't have to work so hard to earn it. It's already yours. Isn't that good news? Yeah. All right, so we're going to do one thing to close. Um, I saw Scott go and, and grab something, so I had the feeling he had something really fun to share. So, Scott, why don't you come and, and wrap it up for us? All right, then. This is true, James. I do have this. This is from my book. Oh, the places your ego will go. <laughs> and uh, I, before I start, I just want to say, Vicky, you are, you have been shining brighter this week with COVID. You've been on like these <laughs> rampages of of grace. I will. I, maybe we should all go out and get COVID. <laughs> 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 Well, works, works for Vicky. 
So, so uh, th there's several poems in this book, and uh, and there's a reference to to the the paddling that James was talking about. And I I want to read you that part. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. Um, so let's get relief from beliefs that are making you paddle upstream till your muscles are aching. Paddling madly in your quest for more ease? It's a clear classic case of mad paddler's disease. <laughs> Let go of the oars, you hear your spirit say, by the sweat of thy brow causes endless ive. The current it moves toward your deepest of dreams, and nothing you want is awaiting upstream. So that's one quote from one poem. And then um, there's a whole lot I got about this whole ease thing. I'll just read you from another poem. Your breath breathes itself with no push and no shove. And so goes your life when you know that you're loved. And if you work hard and do work up a sweat, it's only because you so love getting wet. Because <laughs> when you're inspired, you follow your bliss. Even when you perspire, it feels effortless. Like the work that you're doing is being done through you. And you're thrilled <coughs> to be letting the universe do you. <laughs> So struggle, free living, oh, how we love it. We flow down the stream on the boat, easy does it. And easy does do it, we find out at last. We don't stop at the tolls, we just use easy pass. <laughs> We're taking it light in the slow lane or fast, because the joke's been on us, and we finally can <coughs> laugh. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, when you, were, when you came to the easy pass line, I thought it was going to... What, what was the line right before that? Do you have it? It wouldn't be easy to find it. Okay. Well, I, 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 instead of easy pass, I thought it was going to be smoke some grass. <laughs> that would have been a, the alternative. <laughs> Oh, thank you, everyone. What, what a beautiful, beautiful way to start our day. And let's just remember the song that Scott was singing before we started. Now, now, now. Why not now? Why not today? Why not this moment? Surrender into that infinite ocean of grace. Stop paddling upstream. Just stop paddling. Sit down on your board. It will be fine. You're going to have a great ride. And we say together, Amen, 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 e punto. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day. Enjoy the river. <laughs> Love you all. Thank you. Have a good day.